Hi guys, welcome to our How to Handyman series and in this video we're going to go through how you can save money on a bathroom renovation. Bathroom renovation can be a really expensive project to do within the house, but there's actually some really simple tips that might actually just save you a couple of hundred dollars, but you know, on the larger scale could actually save you thousands of dollars. So that's what this video is about, it's how to save some money um, when you're doing a bathroom reno. But it, look, it also applies if you're doing kitchen renovations or you know, any other building project in and around your house. So hope you enjoy it, if you do, yeah, as normal, hit the like and subscribe button so you can see all of our videos as they uh, come through. All right, so look, I'm gonna go through the uh, tips, no particular order, um, but I, I suppose I need to define what we're talking about today. Uh, when you do a, a bathroom reno or you do any of the really large projects around your house, there's probably two different ways that you can approach it. One, you can go out and get a quote from a number of builders they'll come back, give you a fixed cost, and away you go and the project gets built. Um, if you're going to go through that model, the biggest way to save money is to make sure you do your research beforehand, um, that you identify three really good builders, you know, if you're going to go through Facebook or um, you know, look at get word of mouth, any of those things are really good. Um, but go out, get your three quotes, compare the quotes, find somebody you're comfortable with, do the project and away you go. That's the simplest way to do it. But there is another method that a lot of people use and that is to go more with a time and materials based approach. Um, sometimes this can save you a lot of money, but if it's not done properly, it can actually work out being more expensive. So, yeah, but that's our preferred method is time and materials. But you just gotta follow some really uh, key rules. Um, and if you work well, find a really good builder uh, that you can work with or a really good tradesperson you can work with, you know, it can actually save you a lot of money. The first tip I'd probably give is to make sure that you do your research in choosing your tradespeople wisely. So you know, use Facebook, use um, word of mouth, use recommendations from friends. You know, use all of those things to actually you know, get tradespeople who are well recommended and are qualified to do the job. So you want to check them out, you want to check out the, the work that they've done previously. Again, go to their Facebook page, you know, have a look at the types of jobs that they've done, you know, are they similar to what you're actually wanting to do. And then get references, ask to you know, call some of their uh, most recent customers and even some of their old ones as well just to get a feel for you know, what they're like to them and whether other customers had a great experience. You know, I'd never, you know, if I'm doing a bathroom reno, I never have a problem in giving the name of any of my customers uh, out to new prospective ones as well. So when you found the right tradie, the next thing you want to do is to agree a price that that uh, tradesperson's gonna work for. So on time and materials, what you want is to get uh, what their hourly rate's going to be you also need to look at not only their hourly rate, but do they have an apprentice? You know, what will they charge you uh, for the apprentice? Because normally an apprentice will be cheaper than the core, uh, core tradesperson. You also want to look at if they're buying materials, are they going to add a margin onto those materials as well? And when I say a margin, are they going to add some extra? Normally between sort of 10 to 20% is added onto what costs them is then charged through to you. And that's to allow for you know, them picking them picking the materials up and the costs associated with doing that. And the other thing you really want when you're working with a tradie is will they allow you to get involved in the process? I know when I'm working with my clients, I'm delighted when they say they want to get involved. You know, we recently just did a deck and the customer uh, came along and he was on his hands and knees at the side of me uh, knocking in the nails. Yeah, that was really great fun for him. I was more than happy to teach uh, him how to do it. Yeah, he had a great time, but not only that, he saved himself quite a lot of money because yeah, he was doing part of the work, so he almost became my apprentice. 
So when you've got a tradie, ask them if you can be their, you know, their lackey, their tradie, their, the person that goes and helps. Because that can actually save you quite a bit of money. It's amazing, you know, if you're there just to you know, go and get some nails when they need it, go and get a, um, you know, go and get the grout, mix up the glue. You know, bring those trades, uh, bring those materials to the tradie while he's working. Um, that saves him having to get up and go outside. So again, if that's saving him time, that saves you time, and then that saves money as well. And over the life of the job, that can actually mount up to being quite a significant amount of money. If you feel up to it and you think you're capable, you can also do the demolition yourself. So that is, you know, rip out the old shower screen, rip out the bath, the tiles, you know, get rid of all that rubbish and pull it out of the way and get the site ready for the builder um, or the trader to actually come in and do the work for you. And it's amazing how much money that can save. You know, because de demolishing a bathroom can take anything from one to two days at work. And that can be, you know, 500 to a thousand dollars ultimately, you know, if we're talking Australian money. Um, yeah, if it's in the UK, it might be 300 to 500 pounds. So, yeah, that's money. If you're able to do that and get that ready and prepared, that's money in your pocket. And not only demolition, but as the project goes on, you can take the rubbish to the tip. You know, disposal of the rubbish and the waste. Yeah, if you can do that, again, it's uh, saving you time and so it's saving you money. So, and you don't get the markup that uh, the builder might uh, add on to the project. So, again, might save you another $100 um, as you're working through the whole project. Another big one is uh, if you can go and get the materials yourself. I know when working with uh, my customers, a lot of them have the materials already there sitting and waiting for me. So, and that saves money in a couple of different ways. One, the builder doesn't have to go and get them, but two, it'll save you the markup that a builder often puts onto the materials. So the markup, as I said before, can be anything from 10 to 20%. So if you're saving that 10 to 20%, let's say there's three to $5,000 worth of materials um, in a project, you know, that's three to $500. On a more expensive bathroom, you know, it can add up 500, 1,000 or even more. Just saving by you organizing and having the, the materials delivered and ready and waiting for the trade to go. And then as the project goes along, uh, if, yeah, if the builder is finding that yeah, he's missing something, maybe he's run out of screws, maybe he needs some more grout or some glue or some tiles, whatever it might be, then if you can go and get those materials for him, that keeps him working on the project and it stops the wasting of time that happens when he goes to pick them up because it's not only going to get the materials that's an issue, but it's also the time that it takes to get to the store and the time that it takes to get back. So, you know, if he's run out of screws and needs a, um, some more, it might be that it takes him an hour and a half to two hours to go down to the store and then to come back. Two hours, that it, you know, multiplied by his hourly rate, multiplied by uh, it happening three, four, five times over the life of the project, can quite easily be an extra thousand dollars added onto the, to the cost of the project. So if you can be available and do that for him, it makes his life easier and it makes, uh, makes sure that you're saving money as well. If you've got a builder who is actually doing it all for you and you've agreed that um, yeah, he doesn't need help and you're happy with that, then my next bit of advice is don't hover. Don't look over the shoulder, don't be distracted. Let him get on with the job and get it done as quickly and as fast as possible. Um, yeah, as I've said before, I have no problem if customers want to come and watch and to help and to have a chat, it makes the day go faster. But there are some uh, tradies and builders out there that they feel uncomfortable in doing that. Um, and you know, if, if you're hovering over them and watching everything, then that often slows down the process a little bit. Uh, so yeah, don't hover, keep the distance. If they want to be involved and want to chat, great, go do it. Makes the whole project go a lot better. But if they don't, give them the space, give them the space to sort of get on with it. Okay, what else helps you save money? Um, educate yourself on the process. Just understand what it is that your builders are actually doing. So um, if you've got an idea of you know, what the next process is, what the next stage is, 
then you know, as a builder's got uh, questions for you, you'll have a pretty good uh, understanding of sort of what's coming next. You know, they might be asking you about tile colours or it might be asking you um, about where you want things within the bathroom. If you've got a pretty good understanding of uh, what the end result's going to look like and you can communicate that well to the, to the builder, then that's going to help again speed the process up and also make sure that uh, um, yeah, everything runs smoothly. And if it runs smoothly, yeah, it's going to save you time, it's going to save, you know, save you money as well. And of course, if you're not quite sure uh, what the process is, then you know, take a look at uh, some of the other videos on our YouTube channel. That's what we're here for, is to be able to help you um, understand what uh, the process of building is all about and how to go about things. So yeah, have a good look through our videos and look, ask us questions. You know, jump on our Facebook page. The details of our Facebook page are below this video. Um, go and have a look there. You know, message us if you've got any questions. We're more than happy to help. Of course, some of the technical uh, things of running a project. You know, just keep an eye on uh, the hours that your trade is actually doing. You know, if you get an invoice at, say, at the end of every week, then just have a check through and just make sure that the invoices are correct. I'm not saying that um, you know, the, the tradies are there to actually rip you off because in 99.9% .9 of the cases they're absolutely not. Um, but if you've at least got an idea of how many hours have been worked, then you know, that's just going to help reduce mistakes. Because look, we all make mistakes. Um, and yeah, if you can get on top of that and it saves you money, then yeah, look, that's uh, you know, potentially another way you can save money. Same thing goes when it comes to receipts for materials. Check, ask for the receipts, you know, check them off. You know, if you're working on time and materials, then it's, um, you know, it's quite acceptable for you to ask for the receipts to check what materials are being purchased and just to make sure that uh, you know, everything's legitimate and there haven't again been this, you know, honest mistakes or you know, mistakes made. Um, of course, if you're working on an actual quote, um, then generally the builders say no, you know, we're not going to give those receipts. But time and materials, you're more than entitled to have a look at them. And of course the really big one when it comes to doing a bathroom renovation is having a really good idea and doing your research about what products you're actually going to use within the bathroom um, and how much that's likely to cost you. you know, I look at things like flick mixes or wall taps. You can get a tap for $50 or you can get a tap for $500. You know, do you really need the $500 tap in that bathroom or will something in the mid-range be more appropriate? I know when it comes to our customers, um, you know, generally what I say to them is, look, if we've got you know, a flick mixer um, and you've got a flick mixer at $50 and you've got one at $500, you've got the two side by side, you know, what's the difference? Well, the $50 one's probably going to last you a couple of years before the chrome starts falling off. Whereas the $500 one, um, is likely to last you 20 years or longer. Um, and so neither are necessarily appropriate. What's probably more appropriate is get something middle of the range. So do your research and have a, have a good look around. Because you know, flick mixes, you know, if you've got something in mid-range that's going to last you 10 years plus, then that's probably good for the majority of the bathrooms out there. So that alone can save, you know, uh, save you $250 to $500 per tap in the bathroom. And then you look at things like baths. Um, you know, baths can range from $100 to $4,000 or $5,000. Um, but we normally find a good mid-range bath might, save, might be $1,000 in that space. Same when it comes to vanities. You know, I see a lot of vanities out there and a huge variation in price, but not necessarily much difference in quality. So again, do your research and go and look for some of those other companies out there that are selling you know, high quality product, but they're not in the, what we would call nosebleed territory, not in the really expensive space. So yeah, you know, I, it can be the difference between a bathroom being finished for $15,000 or one that just costs $50,000 can be the difference in the materials that are used. And at the end of the day, when you walk in and look at them, uh, I don't necessarily see a lot of difference between a $15,000 and a $50,000 product end result. 
Um, but again, it might, you've got to understand what it is that you want to spend and what it is that you actually um, want for your house. Because at the end of the day, you're the one that's got to live with it. Your choice of tiles also has an impact in the cost as well. You'd be amazed how many times I see clients purchase what they think are cheap tiles, so cheap subway tiles, because it's gonna save them money. What they don't understand is, if you've got a subway tile, which is you know, small, generally 200 by 100, it can take four or five times longer, because there's four or five times more of those than getting a bigger tile on the wall. So sometimes it's, if you really want to save money, spending a little bit more on tiles that are a little bit larger, although not too large, um, it means that the labour time to install them is actually reduced. So, yeah, you know, have a chat to the builder, have a chat to the tiler that you're perhaps going to be working with, and say, yeah, you know, what is the most cost-effective solution from a labour perspective, as much as how much the tiles are going to cost for my, you know, for your job. So to figure out what's actually going to work best, yeah, you because know, I've seen customers, you know, do even smaller, 100 by 100 tiles and. Yeah, it literally takes days to do them floor to ceiling. Whereas yeah, if I was doing the same job with a 600 by 300, I'd have the whole lot done in a day. So yes, the tiles might be cheaper, but the labor component of it can be way more expensive. And I'm not saying that the size of the tiles is the only important thing here, because sometimes it's the quality of the tile as well. You know, cheap tiles, which you know often have bows in them or are very brittle, you know, can, you can have a lot of wastage when you're working with them. So again, spending a little bit more, getting a quality product, a quality tile, at a reasonable cost, uh, can be a much better way of going you know, for doing your bathroom. Because it's one of those situations where cheap is, in tiles, cheap is not always better. So again, sometimes spending a little bit more can just make the whole process a lot faster and a lot better. And at the end, end of the day, give you a much better result. Another, another really good one, and it sounds silly, um, but is just keep the job fun. Keep the job and the, you know, the guys you're working with or the girls you're working with. You know, we have a, a lady here, a young girl, who's actually an apprentice with us at the moment. You know, keep, keep the job fun, because if the job's fun and everybody's having a good time, then it's likely that the, the, the builder and the tradesman's really gonna look after you and gonna enjoy coming to your job. Yeah, there's nothing worse than going to a job and having, you know, being under pressure and, it, yeah, not being fun. It, yeah, if it's if it's going, if the job is a good place to come to and the customers are delight, then you're going to get looked after as a customer. Yeah, I know I certainly like going to customers when my cup of coffee is ready in the morning. Yeah, most of my customers are really well trained in that in that area. Yeah, I've got my cup of coffee ready before I even start the day. But it makes for light. It makes for a light-hearted, a great working environment. Um, and you know, if you've got a great working relationship with uh, the trades that uh, you're working with, then they're going to look after you and make sure that you're right as well, that, and that your job's right and that your job's perfect. And what else? Um, you've been racking the brain for this particular video. Um, what else is it? Again, I think one of the important things, really, if I was to sum the whole lot up, and that is you know, to do your research. Jump on YouTube, have a look at how things are done. Do your research into the trades. Keep an eye on what's actually happening. You know, just keep an eye over the top of what the costs are. Check invoices, check dates, check materials. Have everything ready for the job. Um, and so that the job can run as smoothly as possible. And if you're there to help without getting in the way, then that's going to make the job just go that much more smoothly. And the smooth job is literally going to save you, you know, hundreds, if not thousands of dollars. And look, you know, as I said before, we're here as well. So you could always contact, contact us directly if you've got questions. Um, we're certainly looking at online coaching for customers just to give them a, uh, or to give you a view of um, you know, what's involved, what's required. Um, so yeah, look, happy to answer any questions. Either leave a comment below or you know, contact us via um, you know, 
through Facebook and uh, Messenger, those sort of things. We endeavour to get back to everybody. Obviously, I can't promise that you know, we do that immediately, but we'll do it as quickly as possible. It's one of the things I certainly say with all my customers is, you know, you can always guarantee that I will call you back at some stage and, and talk through. So, uh, but yeah, look, if it's not us, find yourself a coach. You know, find, have a chat to a builder friend if you have one. Get them to help you. Get them to oversee the project as well. Um, look. Building a bathroom yeah, is such a rewarding thing. You know, we see the before photos and we see the after photos um, and it just adds so much value to your, uh, to your house. So not only are they good to see, good to go into something that's brand new, yeah, add value and uh, look, it can be a great experience um, if you've just got you know, some of the management uh, processes in place and it doesn't have to cost the earth. So, That'll do for, uh, for this particular video. If you like what you see, look, you know, hit that like button below, subscribe to the channel. Um, you know, those sort of things definitely help us. And look, if you've got any comments or questions, leave the comments in the comment section below and we'll see you on the next video. So thanks, see you later, bye. And there's a common method that comes from us. Yeah, even visit our YouTube channel. And, and of course, uh